County Manager Hours, followed by the pledge of Commissioner Strickland. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for the freedom we have to assemble and discuss the business of our community. And I pray, Father, for um, our leaders in Washington that you might be with them and as they uh, discuss uh, difficult issues and issues uh, affecting our nation, I uh, just pray that you would give them wisdom. And we also pray for Senator McCain, that you would lift him up and just be with the doctors and all those involved, uh, that he might uh, have complete healing. And Father, we also thank you for our first responders here in Glen County. We don't take time to thank them enough, but these men and women put, put their lives on the line every day for us so that we might uh, be safe, we might have uh, the protection when we need it. And one of our own uh, is in need uh, tonight of our prayers, Rhett Sexton, our firefighter. I just pray that you might be with him and his family, and we pray that you would touch him in a special way and that you would heal his body. And I pray for the Board of Commissioners tonight that you would give them wisdom as they deliberate on each matter, that, that what is done and, and decided on will be pleasing to you and best for Glen County. And lastly, Father, but not least, we pray for those men and women who are protecting our freedom uh, here in our nation throughout the world, that you might just place your hedge around them and bring them home safe to their families. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, public hearing uh, comment period, I think we have one. Uh, Mr. Matters, you will come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. I'm Ed Meadows. I'm a resident of Glen County, and I live on St. Simons Island. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the Commission for an opportunity to speak with you this evening. I have a couple of comments on land use planning, a topic where we have a few challenges in that together. These comments are based on my 35 years experience in land use management and real estate. I was an executive of a large land management company and then a senior official in the public sector responsible for millions of acres. My first topic is uh, your steering committees for the comprehensive plan. <coughs> I urge you to appoint people to these committees who have experience in land use planning or who at least understand the concept of planning. We have serious land use problems in Glen County not just on St. Simons, but on the mainland. Business leaders have spoken to me that there not enough is being done and they are concerned about our future. I hear the same from our real estate industry. One solution is a comprehensive plan that deals effectively with these issues. A comprehensive plan is not just another development plan. This is not the time to appoint a steering committee of people who just want to be on there for reasons other than good planning. We have many excellent planning efforts already in Glen County that focus on economic development, tourism, and so on. The county spends a lot of time and resources on those questions. You have an excellent economic development program already in place. This is the time to appoint people with expertise in land use people who care about the potential to make our Golden Isles even more attractive, and people who have the vision to see what needs to be done to protect our real estate values over the long run. So this is not a time to use our usual recipe we do in these matters, you know, two developers, two business people, two utilities, and so forth. That expertise is valuable and we need it but those interests are already well represented on other boards that you have in place. Instead, the comprehensive plan is about how we can capitalize on our assets and what can be done to improve our competitive position for the future. I urge you to look for people with new ideas and people in particular who have seen how other communities have done this. The best communities 
seek out the best practices. Challenge them to get all the good ideas. I urge you to direct the community development staff and the consultant to seek out people with this experience. And I urge you to direct them to take every step possible to include maximum input from the public. My second topic is I see in the news your discussion about privatizing planning. <clears throat> I've done a lot of privatizing in my career in both the private and public sectors. One of the agencies I oversaw was the Statewide Land Use Planning Commission. The LUPC is appointed by the governor and responsible for planning and zoning for one half the entire state. We contracted many functions, such as permitting procedures <coughs> or draft, uh, developing new permitting procedures or draft re regulations for complex issues such as siting landfills. But we did not privatize review of development applications. Why not? Because that is a public agency function to represent the public interest and because it is difficult to find contractors who do not have or will not have in future potential conflicts of interest and who the public feel they can trust to be impartial. It is essential that you have very clear criteria for what you want the contractor to do and how they, you want them to function and what authority you may be able to delegate to them under the law. During my time on the Island Planning Commission, we have never discussed planning per se as a topic. What we do discuss is reviewing development plans and findings presented by staff. So is review of development plans what you are thinking of privatizing? That's different than planning. One critical criteria then that must be in a privatizing contract is the relationship and interaction with the planning commissions. If the commissions do not have confidence or trust in the contractor, that will hamper the process, not improve it. And we could end up worse off than we are now. But, as I've said, I've done a lot of privatizing and there may be other functions in the community development department more suitable for privatizing, thus freeing up staff for planning functions. But it is better that we find a way to recruit talented staff for planning who want to come here and make a difference. To do that, we need to change strategies. To do that, I urge you to talk with community residents who have experience in this and see what their thoughts are. I would welcome the opportunity to continue this discussion with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Madison. <clears throat> All right, that, we don't have any presentations or announcements tonight. Uh, a public hearing items, alcohol beverage license, public hearings will be limited to 30 minutes for each opposing side with five minutes allocated to each individual speaker. <coughs> Comments are to be limited to relevant information regarding your position and should avoid being repetitious. If your group has a spokesperson, please allow that individual to present your group's position in the time allocated. <coughs> your cooperation in this process will be greatly appreciated. Item number one, consider the issuance of an alcohol beverage license to Hugo Acero Espinosa for Pie Guys Pizza, 5006 Altama Avenue, Brunswick, Georgia. The license is to sell malt beverages and wine for consumption on premises of a restaurant. No Sunday sales. Occupation tax. Chief. If it pleases the commission, Mr. Chair, Mr. Espinosa is present in the audience with his hand up and he meets the requirements for your consideration for issuance of the license. Questions? Public hearing, sir? Is it a public hearing for those for and against? Yes, it is. Any questions for staff before we have? Uh, any, anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application may do so now. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm Joan Drome. I'm here to speak on behalf of Pie Guys Pizza. Hugo Acero is an entrepreneur who is full of the American dream. He and his family of seven hail from Ecuador, and he learned the art of authentic New York-style pizza while working in Manhattan at a pie shop for two years. Then he came down here to Brunswick, and then he worked faithfully as an employee at Arte's Pizza. And I, as a consumer, could tell when Hugo and his family weren't there making the pizza. Recently, in March, he opened Pie Guys Pizza, and I'm a faithful customer, and I just want to let you know that 
anything you can do to support Hugo at, at, as a small business owner and Pie Guys Pizza, I am sure will prove to be a benefit for Glen County. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of Pie Guys or the application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Seeing none, hearing none. Commissioner? Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the application for Pie Guys Pizza, signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. And young lady is a certified Yankee. I'm going to come by and eat that pizza. We'll see how good it is <laughs> with New York pizza. <laughs> All right, public hearing abandonment. Abandonment 2807, consider the application for abandonment of the unopened Maple Street right-of-way east of 6th Street in the Glen Haven subdivision between 604 and 606 6th Street, David Rosinski and Augustine Laxamana. Applicants, Mr. Andrews. Commissioners, uh, this one. <clears throat> This item is a is a <coughs> request to abandon section of right of way that's currently unopened on the western side of Glen Haven subdivision. Um, the area in red is the area requested to be abandoned. Uh, the the applicants live here and here. The property here is owned by. Uh, David Rosinski is the applicant. Uh, so um, the Maple Street currently comes in, in dead ends. The pavement ends essentially right at the end of the um, area to be abandoned. This is looking from 6th Street to the east. Uh, the area is currently wooded. Uh, the adjacent property owners have, have cleared it and um, maintained the grass. There is a storm drainage system underground through a portion of this area that the county currently uh, uses or maintains. This is the plat of the area, the house, uh, and there was a boat shed here that's um, since the time of this survey has been mostly demolished. The slab's still there, and part of the back wall structure is still there. General information about the site, it's been used as it, as it is currently for several years. Um, the abandonment of this parcel would um, return it to the tax digest, but it also um, ends any, any possibility for the county to continue six, uh, Maple Street through to 6th and have a through street in that area. Um, as part of the abandonment, staff is requesting the drainage easement be retained uh, along the center line of the right of way now. Um, results of the review uh, that the drainage easement be retained. Abandonment will um, not allow the road to continue as a through street, and there's currently not enough right of way to create a install a cul de sac as required by the ordinance. Um, and the uh, adjacent parcels would have to be combined together so that there would be no landlocked parcels um, fronting on this area that, of right of way that would be abandoned. Uh, given those items, this is the motion. Um, to approve the, the abandonment as requested with those items addressed. Okay, questions for staff? You have a couple. Um, yes, sir. How long has this been a dead end road? We don't have any record of it ever being used as a roadway through I'm there. Saying, how long has the road dead ended in this into this uh, right of way? Since Maple was was opened uh, in the 40s, I guess. Why are the applicants making an, an application to abandon it? Well, this um, originally it started uh, as when uh, Mr. Rosinski built his boat shed. As you can see, it occupied part of the um, part of the unopened right of way. It wasn't fully on his parcel, and so in an effort to to uh, correct that situation, 
came to that an abandonment, if the property was abandoned, that that boat shed would remain on the parcel. However, questions of the front yard setback remain. So, like I said, the boat shed has mostly been removed to this point. At this point, um, that that was when uh, this item first started. However, I understand that they're they're pursuing it now because they want the right of way to be abandoned. I mean. Any other questions for staff? So, yes. Paul, what you're saying is he he built a boat shed <clears throat> on the property and then realized by whatever means that he was over the bounds. And now he's corrected that? The, the the way the boat shed issue has has was that the boat shed was in violation. Right, right. And one of them was that it was constructed in the unopened county right of way, public right of way. The other was that it was constructed within the 20 foot front yard setback area. So they started the pursuit of the abandonment to correct the parcel issue. If if the board abandoned this property, the boat shed would would be on property owned by the applicant. It did, wouldn't address the front yard setback, and I understand that since the abandonment process was started, I think it was in, started in 2014, mm -hmm. through the, the owner of the boat shed decided that he would have that shed removed because I understand that there wasn't expected to be favorable variances to the front yard setback. So, but if if it if it stayed like it is, then what what you're saying is, if, for whatever reason and for any reason, the county could go in there and extend Maple Street on through, if they wanted to. Yes, sir. There'd be some environmental impact issues we'd have to deal with. Is why I expect the road wasn't built through. It drops down. These lots are are low and wet. Our storm drain runs up in this area and picks up the edge of the low spot that this whole area of these wow, the half a block drains to and it drains out through our pipe getting through that area with the road would be so there was obviously a reason why it was like that to start with I believe so, yes, sir. right there okay. yes sir okay thank you are there any other questions for staff <clears throat> this is a public hearing item uh, Anyone wishing to come and speak in favor of the abandonment may do so. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the abandonment may do so. State your name for the record. My name is James Holland. I'm a resident of Glen County. I've never, I, I, my, uh, my, mine is more of a request for an answer about this, okay, then it is a no on it. Could we go back to the next to the last image on that thing? Which one do you want, Mr. Allen? You want the picture? No. This is the information for the... Motor. That's it right there, I think. Question one is, if this is abandoned, who is it abandoned to? Who is going to be the beneficiary of this piece of property? You're asking who's going to pay the taxes on it? Pardon me? Who's going to pay the taxes on it? They are. I said, you're asking who is going to pay the taxes I, I on the deed for the I'm, property. It, that, yes, that would include title also. Right. Yes, sir. Go, wouldn't it? Yes, sir. Then, okay, who is that? It's the adjacent landowner to the center line of the road. Would you say that again? I don't hear it. Well. It's the adjacent landowner to the center line of the right of way. Okay, how large is this little piece of property? I can't, it doesn't, I don't recognize any of that up there by 
be high because it doesn't say 10,000 square feet, 1,000 square feet. I believe it's a 40 foot right away through there. How about each way square? Um, the the right of way itself is a uh, approximately fifty foot, and the lots are and the length is forty foot wide. Let me see if I can count some lots. short side and 160 on the long approximately is there enough for a house in there small house you got stories I, I don't the I mean you know we're talking about giving away property that belongs to the public and I'm just now getting involved in this this abandonment business and my main question right now is, I see this as being big enough for one of the adjoining, adjoining property owners to build something on. Now, my, my next question is, if we give it to them or abandon it to them, what do we, John Q. Public, get? What's our gift? Are we going to get, a, get something for that property that belongs to us? Mr. Mumford, can you speak to the fact that if, if they want to do it that way, that or else the county put it up for sale and get what we can? Well, uh, there are easements uh, that are through the property, and easements will remain in perpetuity. I don't think you can build a house on top of a, a drainage easement. Could they put a patio on it? The, the areas that are would be conveyed to the adjacent property owners um, Part of the recommendation is to require that these lots that are that would not front on public right of way, that lot and these two lots be combined with the other parcels. This land would be combined with them. With that. To bind them together, they they're not lots of record, so they wouldn't be buildable as lots of record, and they're they don't meet the current lotting requirements, but they would be combined into the developable area of the adjacent lots, so. And increase the property value. Now, what do we get? They go back on the tax rolls, Mr. Holland. Pardon me? They go back on the tax rolls. Back. And that's all? Yes, sir. That's nothing. We ain't getting nothing now. You're giving it away, and they go back on... I don't know the way y'all have increased property taxes here lately. Eventually, it'll get to be something where maybe worth something. But I don't understand this: that we give our pro we give our property away and we don't get nothing back but tax value. That that's not right. The public is getting ripped off. You, there's no other way for us to look at it. And that's my that's my problem. Okay, what do we get for it? If we if we don't get anything for it, then it should remain as is, and I object to it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Commissioners, I can probably the, the county does not own this this property. It has an easement for roadway purposes, and all the county would be doing all for an abandonment. You're abandoning your right to use it as a right of way, but the county does not own this. Um, Except for it has a, as a as a right of use for right of way, so you're abandoning that 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 use. That's all. Who's paying taxes on the property as it is today? Probably aren't any taxes to it all on it. None. So to, no. so to confuse it even further, <laughs> since I've been dealing with some of these issues, who does own it if the county doesn't own it? The the actual the applicant owns the property. Um, but it's encumbered with the county's right of use as a, as a right-of-way. So really, we're just giving up the, the right-of-way 
and and really there's no ownership transfer other than as Commissioner Strickland said possible property tax is being asked at it correct that, that's correct we're just removing the county's layer of its interest away from it but the uh, applicants already owns it we're just taking away our right to use it as a, as a right away in the future okay <clears throat> any other anyone else like to speak uh, in opposition to the application for abandonment hearing none commissioners <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the application for abandonment of 2807 Maple Street right away east of 6th Street in the Glen Haven <coughs> subdivision between 604 and 606 6th Street. Have a motion. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I have uh, something. Uh, Paul, if um, we abandon this, will this homeowner who built the uh, Boat shed. Will he have enough property to rebuild that on that right of way? What well, used to be the right of way? Uh, like Christian said, is with the retaining uh, drainage easement down the middle of this. Mm -hmm. If if they rebuilt it right adjacent to the house, there'd probably be enough room to build a boat shed similarly sized. Mm -hmm. um, but the drainage easement being centered on thirty foot centered on here takes up. He wouldn't be able to build it in that same location. Mm-hmm. And how did this come about that we found out about it? Uh, it was a uh, request for code enforcement to go out and take a look. Okay. I'm not sure. I, well, I don't know all I have to say is I, I'm not necessarily opposed to this. If the gentleman wants to rebuild his boat house, which I'm sure that's what's going to end up happening here at some point. But this year, earlier this year or last year, we had a gentleman, an elderly gentleman, I believe it was in your district, Commissioner Browning, that needed some uh, relief on some uh, setbacks. And it was subsequently turned down by this commission because it's, I think the comments that were used, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than to, or beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. And it seems to me like what we've got here is a situation where somebody has a boathouse built that's basically not legal. Code enforcement went out, found out, and now we're being asked to abandon it so he can rebuild or do whatever he wants to do. Like I said, I'm not necessarily opposed to it. I voted to give the gentleman last year the easement to give him the relief, and we, I lost that vote. But now I'm being asked to do the same thing for somebody else that this commission turned down a year ago, and all that guy wanted, all that gentleman wanted, was relief on the setback because there was a shop with a destroyed roof a foot over that line, one foot. And this commission turned him down. Gentlemen, if we're going to do and be consistent with what we're talking about with doing it right the first time instead of coming back after the fact, it seems to me we're in the same boat on this. May I add? Sure. One of the requirements is that the boat shed in the deed that we've created for this is that the boat shed be removed from its current location. And is I, there anything in there you can't rebuild it somewhere else? No, sir. Then as long as it meets the requirements. Just, of the and what's the fine for this? Uh, they've already paid, um, I believe, twice fines to the um, over at the courts. So they have paid fines. They have. Uh, yes. Make sure this gentleman was ordered to pay fines. Yes, sir. So I'll make sure. But so he can just rebuild it. He well, can, come he and get it. He's unpermitted and build it somewhere else. As long as he gets a permit and it meets the requirements. Same. Same situation. Difference is. It's where this is instead of out in District 1. Thank you. But he's still got, he's going to, he has to meet the setbacks if, if he rebuilds it and everything, right? Yeah. yeah yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, the, or, or go through the process of, of pursuing a variance. Right. Okay. But um, the, the boat set as it sits, and it's already mostly removed, it's, the intention is to have it removed from that location. He's basically begging for forgiveness instead of asking for permission, which is exactly the same situation with the 80-year-old gentleman who came in here and asked for a one-foot variance, and this commission turned him down. All right. Any further discussion? I just got one more question. Do we know how long the boathouse has been there? Uh, approximately three years. Three? Three? A little bit longer when this started, when the abandonment request came in, was about the time it was built. Okay. 
went and sat again? So when the, when the abandonment was made, it, it had recently been built, and the abandonment request came in. You said 2014. Yes, sir. That's from memory. Let me see if I can find it. Yes, sir. Okay. So March of 2014, so it was probably late 13, early 14 when the shed was, when the boathouse was built. Okay. And then apparently was made aware? Yes, sir. That he was illegal? With, with regard to the boathouse, and that, this, this abandonment has since become just a, a request to abandon because the boathouse is, 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 there. is being removed. Um, but the, uh, the, the code enforcement brought the, brought the uh, question to the, um, to the courts, and the judge at the time offered that the, if there were some ways to remedy by getting an abandonment, by getting variances to setbacks and making the boathouse legal and not in, in violation anymore, then the, the judge at the time allowed him, allowed the applicant uh, time to do that. And that's what has been going on for the last, in the intervening time, is the pursuit of... So, did, do I understand, in the meantime, though, he has... Move the boathouse, or tore some of it down, or what? Uh, torn down most of, most of it. There's a. Um, let me see if I included it. Crap. That's a, not the best of photos. This is what remains of the boathouse. Is uh, the the pad, the concrete pad here was fully enclosed with a roof. This is the back wall of it is all that remains standing. Um, there was a, a large A-frame roof on top covering the whole of the concrete pad. So that's, so, current, that's as of this morning is what was out there. So what you're saying is he's in compliance as we speak. Not, not quite yet. Not quite yet. But they're moving towards it. Okay. But yes, I'm sir. saying he is in the process of being in compliance. And then in the meantime, he's asking for an abandonment which in turn would, he'd still have to stay where he's moving it to to be in compliance? Just, just for clarity, we haven't heard anything about moving it. There, there is, with, with the abandonment, there would be enough room on the combined parcel to, to relocate a similar size boathouse, but that request hasn't come to the county yet. If it does, I mean, he may or may not want to relocate it, but the agreement is that that the boathouse as it was will be removed. So, so if I could just make a, a couple of observations maybe. <clears throat> I think some of these uh, right-of-way easement and abandonment issues are terribly complicated. And it really comes down to, you know, what, what I look at as a simplistic worldview of who actually owns it. And if we don't really own it, how can we sell it? Now, we'll return to the tax rolls, so we'll get some benefit ultimately, although admittedly not a lot of dollars. To me, the primary issue, if there's not a real value to it, is what do the adjacent property owners think? What, what do the neighbors think? And in this circumstance, my understanding is the three years between then and now really was to, to, to negotiate that out. Is that not correct? Now, I remember sitting in a meeting shortly after I assumed my role and listening to, to the discussion that, that did at some, some level deal with that. But right now, the adjacent property owners are in agreement with this request, correct? The adjacent property owners are part of, of, of this across the road. Right. And, right. and we, I haven't heard um, anything from the folks along Maple Street to say yes or no since it's been posted. Well, I'm talking about the people immediately impacted by this, the adjacent property owners. My understanding they're on board. Yes, sir. That's the, so, uh, so, I mean, it, it seems to me a, a relatively simple process, and, and I would be in favor of the request. Any further discussion? Yeah, I seem to recall the neighbors of the gentleman that I referred to earlier also had no issues with the uh, variance on the setbacks that the gentleman had requested, and that didn't seem to make a whole lot of difference. Any further discussion? All right, we have a motion and a second. All those of, in favor of approving the abandonment signify by raising your right hand. 
and six. All those opposed? One. Thank you. All right, moving right along here. <clears throat> abandonment 3328, consider the application for abandonment of all the roads and drainage easements in the peninsula at Golden Isle subdivision, phase one off Buck Swamp Road between Myers Hill Road and Old CCC Road, peninsula at Golden Isle's Property Owners Association, applicant Mr. Andrews. Commissioners, this is a, that's it. This uh, subdivision that was uh, created several several years ago, um, off of Buck Swamp Road, um, if you come off of 17, past Myers Hill, there's, uh, there are entrances a uh, good ways down. This is where the big berm is that they built as part of the development along Buck Swamp Road. Um, the request before you is to abandon all the rights of way within phase one which is a uh, portion shown in red of, of right of way count. It was uh, conveyed in ownership to the county and uh, the right of way was dedicated to the county at the time the subdivision was created. Uh, this is a, have the entrance road, um, some large lagoons with the roads, rights of way going around them and uh, some side loops that allow for access to parcels that are already there. Although lots have been created, uh, very few houses, I think two houses have been built out there plus a amenity clubhouse, a small clubhouse here. Um, and in the order of 10 lots have been sold. 11. 11, 11 lots. Um, information on this is the county actually, and this one is different than the last, this one the county actually owns the right of way and uh, holds the uh, the right of way easement on behalf of the public. Um, it's paved open for public and traffic and used for utilities. Um, it was uh, undeveloped land before the subdivision was created. so. Uh, the future use is to continue to be used to access the adjacent parcels and to provide the utilities for them. And the uh, benefit to the public is that we would be relieved of the maintenance responsibility as well as uh, the parcel going back on the tax digest. But right now the county is obligated to maintain that the road and uh, drainage infrastructure. Um, there's water and sewer in the in the rights of way. Those will be need to be conveyed to joint water and sewer. Um, their request and um, the owner and joint water and sewer have entered into an agreement regarding the sewer services to the parcels in that subdivision. And the other utility was that along Buck Swamp Road is there three points where drainage from the Buck Swamp Road right-of-way comes through the subdivision through, at the time the subdivision was created, or public easements, through the lagoon system and out through the wetlands. Um, we have created a uh, drainage easement that would allow for that drainage from the public right-of-way of Buck Swamp Road to continue through. Um, we would be able to maintain the system if that drainage was for whatever reason blocked or, or stopped through lack of maintenance or whatever, but we wouldn't be the primary maintenance for that system. We would, we would have those rights if we needed them. And um, the review results is the, um, as part of the abandonment, we were going to abandon all the drainage easements, those outside of the rights of way as well, because once we abandon the rights of way, in the drainage utilities in those, we don't want to have to, county staff to go out and maintain those short sections that run out in between the houses to get to the, the outfall lagoons. Um, and then the, the second item is the, where the developer owner would convey back those rights for the county to drain the public water from Buck Swamp Road through their private subdivision. Um, since the, since the county was contained, conveyed ownership rights, we would have to 
county needs to sell those, the ownership of the right of way is the third item and the fourth item is to convey to joint water and sewer easements for the existing water and sewer infrastructure that's out there in the right of way. And the motion includes addressing these items. It's a bulleted motion to include addressing all those items. Absolutely. Go, go back to the, the one just before. The, no, other way. Right there. Yes, sir. Because this, this just came up about the price and uh, what the price will be in this conveyance. It's important to uh, point out that Glen County paid nothing for this right of way, correct? Yes. So that sort of establishes the, the baseline value, I would think. So, so help me understand. So the original developer wanted to convey the rights of the roads to the county. And now uh, the new developer wants, wants to uh, pr basically privatize the road. And in one of your slides, you, you suggested that public ve vehicular traffic would be permitted. Currently. Correct? That's current. Current. That's the current use. Is but, but, but they still have the capability to, uh, to gate this community, correct? If, if the abandonment goes through, that's one of the reasons that Got it. They, will, they will be installing uh, gates on but, it. Uh, to me, this is a huge piece of property. Uh, what, 3,300 acres, something like that? And not just this piece, but... This, the future phases are, right. are, are make it that big, yes. Sir. So uh, I'm not asking you, but to me it strikes me that if, we, if we've taken this out of the domain of public works, we're saving the county a tremendous amount of money. Does it strike you as that? Over the particularly lifetime with, of the subdivision. Particularly with road maintenance. Yes, sir. Maintenance in there will eventually be a, a cost item. Yeah, thank you. Well, Aaron, what kind of, I'm sorry, go ahead. What, what kind of agreement do we have with the owners um, to, I guess, if uh, things didn't go well and we had to go in and maintain that drainage from Buck Swamp Road down the main drainage through those lagoons and whatever, what, what kind of agreement do we have with the owners to do that or subsequent owners or wh whomever might be involved in that? Well, we're, we're getting an easement right for the county to do it if, to, to perform that work if the subdivision owners don't do it. Um, the expectation is because it, those systems also provide drainage for their subdivision. So right. they would be incumbent to um, maintain also, them for drainage for their subdivision. Well, they well. also uh, obviously provide drainage outside of their subdivision if they're off Buckswamp Road. Yes, sir. So we'll, we'll have a memorandum of understanding or something, or do we, we'll have an easement, or? We, we have an easement for the county to do it if we need to. If we need to. In, in the event that for whatever reason the owners don't maintain their system, the county has the ability to go in and maintain it to provide for that through flow, but. So in other words, once it's developed and built out, they can just walk away from the drainage and not worry about it. And then when it starts flooding people's property, they're going to be back to the county want us to go in and clean out the ditches, correct? When it starts flooding their property, our easement won't, doesn't apply to that. We would point to them and say, this is, y'all having drainage issues internal to your subdivision, that's for y'all to deal with. The, the agreement, that, the, the easement that we have provides for us to so in other words, what through. the chairman was asking is we are not committed to clean out their drainage ditches if they stop doing it at this at this point if they stop doing it and it starts flooding the county's not obligated to go in there and clean out those ditches like we would for other non privatized subdivisions correct that, that's correct okay. yes sir I'm sorry I missed that but but we can if, if it's for the betterment of the greater good for the for Buck Swamp Road the right. public right of way yeah Mr. Mumford, it, it, it refresh my memory. When this was first developed and, and the initial developer went belly up and the county had to call a bond on this, did the county incur any kind of, of cost or anything related to that at all? Or? Uh, not, not that I recall. I'll defer to, to Paul or, or maybe Mr. Worley, but I don't recall the county aside from calling on the bond and getting those mm -hmm. funds about having right. to spend any out-of-pocket county funds. Okay. I mean, that, that I think we used up all that bond money, but I, I don't believe we had to go for any more money. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Paul, my, my question is this. They throw a gate up there. Uh, is this big, huge piece of property. Uh, let's go back to our most recent uh, storm debris removal. <laughs> uh, are we, we getting ourselves obligated to do that and have to fight with Freeman to do it? Like we, like we, like we did recently uh, with these other gated privatized communities? It would just be another, another one of the private gated communities, or private communities, not just gated. Uh, Paul, what this really amounts to is, you know, a decision to either let them go gated and private or stay public, um, which we have quite a few private gated communities in Glen County now. Yes, sir. The biggest issue we ran into with them was hurricane and storm debris. <clears throat> and this board voted to go into them, even though we didn't have to because they were gated, but we voted to go in, in there, and I think because it was the right moral thing to do, they're also taxpayers, and we clean those communities up. But <clears throat> um, but I always think it's a win-win when we can, you know, take take a burden off of our public works department, especially with a potential development this size. Um, you know, and, 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 and as far as the main drainage from Buffalo back out the back side, Buffalo, I said Buffalo, Lord have mercy. I'm thinking about home. <laughs> uh, Buck Swamp Road out to the back side of that, that's the main drainage. Uh, we are going to have an agreement for an easement so we can go in there and clean that if need be. Yes. Ma maintain it. Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> are there any other questions for staff? Um, yeah, I, I agree with what uh, Commissioner Browning just said. But uh, the um, um, do we know um, the amount of tax revenue that we may get from the development of these? Do we look at that at all when we're doing this? I, I, I do not. As far as what the um, what the tax revenue may be on the right of way. How, how many lots are in this? Uh, no. Hundred and twenty something. Two hundred. Mm. And so, do we know about what the um, the 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 cost of the uh, the structures that would go to home? I, I expect the applicant could probably better address that than than that, the county engineer. I, I, mean, I would amount, I would imagine they're going to be expensive if they're going to spend a million dollars on amenities for that place. The right. uh, homes out there are going to be. Uh, fairly expensive right so this is right I just concur yeah. with everybody that this is a win-win I think uh, and, and as far as the hurricane I mean I mean I'm sure that they will take that note and have insurance to help with that process well I, I think, think some of the folk did I think we've got our ordinances in place now that address gated communities uh, in the so we we bet that, that we have another hurricane. Okay. So I All think right. that's uh, the county attorney has has addressed that, and we've got those in place, so we don't have that issue. Any other qu any other questions for staff? All right, this is a public hearing item. Um, anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application for abandonment may come forward. Mr. Chairman, gentlemen, uh, my name is Jim Bishop. I represent the applicant here, and we are prepared to have answer questions. I think you all have discussed this pretty thoroughly. This is basically a failed subdivision that began back in uh, 2007 and, and eight. Uh, originally uh, permitted for like 4,400 units, which is a really big subdivision. The, the two phases, the initial phase is 208 lots, 11 lots have been sold. There are two houses, only two houses out there. I, I think it's safe to say they would like some neighbors. We've tried as hard as we can to contact the, the other property owners. We've only been able to contact seven of them. They all favor what we're trying to do here is essentially spend a fair amount of money um, reinventing this in subdivision, downsizing the back sides of it. A great number of acres have been um, dedicated to, to conservation, uh, which has lowered uh, the density once if they ever get to the back side of this. Uh, I would say this, if we worked hand in glove with, with the county 
uh, and appreciate very much the cooperation we've gotten with the county staff, the planning department. We've used uh, good resources. Thomas and Hutton Engineering, Shoot Survey, has done the surveying work. Dan Busey have done our environmental work. We've worked with the U.S. Army, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Department of Natural Resources, Glen County, uh, the JWSC. Um, all parties have been very cooperative, but it's been very extensive as we have tried to get through all that we've had to do in order to make certain that um, we have done the right thing, connected all the dots, and complied, we thank in every respect. So, um, unfortunately, our, our real experts are not here tonight. They've had family commitments. Charles Ezell with Thomas and Hutton, Table Hill with Shoot Survey, and I'll do the best I can to, to, and, uh, to get through this. Pete Bailey is one of the owners. He's back here. Mr. Bailey, if you raise your hand. So he's one of the owners of, of this uh, development. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? All right. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the abandonment application? <coughs> Mr. Anyone Mr. wishing to speak in opposition? Excuse me. Yeah, I was trying to get you that, any questions for the applicant. We never did get a – didn't you have him come up here to kind of verify how many potential lots we got here? <clears throat> 208, didn't you say, Jim? I mean, that initially, was, that was phase initial. one. I think what I think what Commissioner Coleman's asking is: Does the Mr. Whole, Bishop have the any whole any thing. idea what the uh, what the market value of this subdivision is? It will relate to the tax base of Glen County uh, mm -hmm. when it's fully built out. Is that about what? I you're mean, what? Wasn't there like 30, 30, 3,300 lots or something like that? Well, originally, uh, Commissioner Coleman, it was it was. Uh, um, um, developed and authorized to, uh, to build 4,400 4,400 um, 208 lots in the first phase that's what we're talking about now right. the, the back phases of that will depend on a number of things and we've taken a great number of those acres out and placed in conservation uh, easements if you just do the mathematics to it it's about altogether uh, over a thousand lots but realistically because Something you'll have to deal with a little later. We're going to have to deal with the um, uh, septic tank use of the property. The lots are going to, going to. In fact, we're going to lose um, um, in that first phase. We'll probably lose uh, a dozen lots because we're going to have to expand the lot size in order to accommodate septic tanks. So that's uh, that's one of the things we, uh, one of the factors we'll have to deal with as we develop the property. Okay. So two, 208 in the first 11 of which have sold about 197 lots uh, that are available. But, you know, extrapolate, take away from that, you know, probably 190 on a good day, maybe, if things go well in the first phase. And the balance of it is just depend on the market and what the value of those lots would be. Um, you know, I, 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 I can't tell you that, but the, our clients have presented a plan that your, your planning department have seen has seen that uh, for the for the uh, expenditure of about a million two or three for an amenity center that's a that's a very nice amenity center and uh, I think those plans are in the planning department but I'm happy to show them to any of them. that's a nice development I think maybe they want to make a donation to joint water sewer to extend that water and sewer <laughs> on out <laughs> I, you know, the truth of I the mean, matter while, is, while writing checks. <laughs> well, the truth of the matter is, that, you know, we would love to have, be able to to have public sewer uh, out there, but you just can't do it. It's a uh, it's a, a million dollar expenditure in order to do that, and 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 plus probably. Anyway, we tried that route, not available to us, and we the on the the rest of the agendas give us a couple of waivers to deal with safety things out there. Uh, on these, uh, on the phases, in order to accommodate the development. Right, right. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions for the applicant? Mr. Bishop doesn't have to make his trip back up. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Council. Uh, speaking in opposition to the application. Okay. Uh, I'm Julian Smith, known as Putty, and I live on St. Simon's Island. I want to endorse what uh, Mr. Bishop said that the proposed uh, revision of the original planned uh, development text for the southern part of this property is 
a great improvement over what was proposed 10 years ago. And that's great. But the issue is the abandonment of these roads. And whether or not these roads are abandoned, uh, if they're not abandoned, the second part, the southern part, the much larger part, over 3,000 acres, uh, the issue of whether those roads are going to be public or private is separate from what you're doing tonight. And I want to thank you for actually holding this public hearing tonight after deferring or postponing it on several, uh, at several previous meetings. In his two identical abandonment applications, Attorney James Bishop states that the, quote, the applicant desires to privatize all the roads within Peninsula Golden Isle subdivision due to ongoing trespassing, dumping or of trash and other vandalism acts, unquote. Uh, back in early April, when I first read uh, Mr. Bishop's claim, I went out to this subdivision and drove around on the public roads uh, from which I could see areas where dumping had been going on for years. Tires, mattresses, furniture, appliances, odds and ends of junk, and a lot of litter. I went back again this morning and took another look. The stuff I saw months earlier was still there, which means the owners are maintaining an attractive nuisance. Litter and debris left beside or near public roads tends to breed more dumping, more litter. The owners need to clean up their property. <coughs> in answer to the question, quote, what is the benefit to public in abandoning the right of way, unquote, Mr. Bishop states, no vandalism, trespassing, or trash dumping. That's a quote. No vandalism, trespassing, or tra trash dumping. But what is the benefit to the public of abandoning public amenities to prevent trespassing or dumping on private property? If you really believe that abandoning county roads will end vandalism, trespassing, or dumping, then you'll probably believe anything. Would you believe that the applicants want to create a huge, exclusive, and gated hunting enclave one and a half times the size of Sea Island? That's what they want. Let's be serious. Dumping and littering and vandalism are not a good reason for the county to abandon 35 and a half acres of public roads and rights of way that the original developers conveyed to the county in 2007 and, quote, forever dedicated them to public purposes, unquote. Why did the original developers give up these acres and roads to the county? Because the construction and paving of the roads was a requirement, a condition of approval. Mr. Bishop also notes another benefit, quote, no further county maintenance, unquote. That is not a benefit for the folks who buy lots in this subdivision and have to pay maintenance fees to the developers over whom they have no control. Let's consider what happened since the planning of these phase one of this development in 2007. The real estate market collapsed because of the kind of out of control speculation that we see in the original plan development text for the Peninsula Golden Isles. Uh, what is to stop more of the same uh, as this new project gets started? Um, we have a, 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 a text was approved at the uh, last meeting of the Mainland Planning Commission to allow uh, more than a thousand lots uh, in, uh, on acreage which is swampy at full of wetlands in March. Okay, in the last 10 years, only 11 of the 208 lots platted in 2007 have been sold. And only two houses have been built. And two... Uh, 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 enough of that. Item 45 on your agenda tonight is a request you allow the same developers to put more than 1,500 potential lots on private septic systems, on septic tanks and leach fields in the middle of swamps, wetlands, and marshes. Uh, I don't blame the developers for wanting to gate off that huge project. They don't want the public to be able to drive in and see what a stinking mess may result. Minutes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please don't do this. <clears throat> All right. Anyone else like to speak in opposition to the abandonment? Yes, sir. Tom. Oh, 
Okay, uh, again, my name is James Holland. I live at 232 Bucks Mountain Road, which is five driveways from Highway 17 on the east end. <clears throat> my one question is, wasn't this area first designed to have uh, uh, public sewage treatment out there? I'm talking about back to a sewage plant. I heard the guy just, just now talk about it It'd take a million dollars to get it down there now, now and they don't want to do that, but they want to fill these high-end homes out there. What I just said was public su joint sewage and water treatment. Weren't they a first supposed to put that out there? Mr. Andrews, you want to address that? Originally? Yes, sir. The Joint water and sewer, the utilities are already out there. They were constructed as part of the subdivision. One of the items is to convey easement rights to joint water and sewer for those, for that infrastructure that's there. My next question is this for the commissioners. Why do y'all pay all this money to plan for the future? If the first damned investment that comes along says I don't want to do it because it's going to cost too much, too much and then y'all talking about well we're going to abandon the roads is that part of the deal abandon, abandon the roads and give it to them so they can have septic tanks out there is it I'm asking is this part of the deal if it is, it is a lousy deal. Now, first thing, first things come first. I have not seen any plans of this thing except this conceptual, conceptual idea for this subdivision out there. Commissioners, you're fixing to get set up to be suckers. You give them what, what they want on this side of that swamp, you're going to pay hell getting them on the other side of that swamp. This is the, this will be the most congested area other than maybe Sea Island or some parts of St. Simon's Island of sewage that is barely under the ground in this county. Now, when I got my place put up on, on the east end of Buck Swamp Road was, uh, 40 years ago. I had no idea what septics were. I was a food service person, okay? I had no idea what septic could cause. But when when the guy come out to inspect my lot, it couldn't pass the pork test, okay? What they did to get me past the pork test they dug a little ditch out to the Spoke Swamp Road to lower the freaking water table. I looked on the, uh, on, on, the, on the computer today, and that area down there, uh, uh, most of it, it, the elevation is about exactly what mine is at my house on that end, 17 to 19 feet. You're setting us up for some of the most damaging water quality in this county because there is you're, 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 you're putting it right in a pile I mean right in a pile you're putting it. and then they, they talk they play this thing off as this is going to be an environmentally beautiful thing they're going to have quail fields and blah 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 they're going to have what they're planning on doing is growing quail in a cage and turning them loose out there to shoot okay in order to do that, the ones that's left behind, they got to get rid of the hawks because they're going to catch them birds that only fly 40 yards and then try to sit back down. Same thing with them pheasants out there. What What is this? Where are the lions and the, and the giraffe going to stay? This sounds like that deal up on the Omaha Canal in 99, of about 95. When the developer gets his money and walks away and that's what they do they get their money as fast as they can and walk away you me us we're going to get stuck with all that on the backside. 
Mr. Holland, your five minutes is up. Okay. Thank you, sir. They've even got commercial things out there. What's wrong with this? Please, don't, don't <coughs> Anyone else like to speak in opposition to the application? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Monica Smith, and I also live on St. Simons Island. I have two concerns about this project. One is procedural, and the other is substantive. First, the form letter sent to property owners within 200 feet of this proposal to turn the north shore of the Satilla River into a suburban enclave for people who like to shoot things is both misleading and insulting. What is misleading is that the supposed applicant, the Peninsula of Golden Isles Property Owners Association, is a convenient fiction shielding a bunch of land speculators. Other than the speculators hiding behind the LLCs, there are only two homeowners and nine owners of vacant lots. What is both misleading and insulting is that this letter informs citizens that they are, quote, allowed to attend, unquote, this public hearing. That's simply wrong. The letter should have said that the county commission is required to hold a public hearing before it gives away the public assets at stake in this, on this evening. This form letter is in need of immediate revision to make clear that the public is not only invited to com comment, but that their input will be seriously considered by the stewards of our resources. As to the proposal to abandon the roads and utilities so that the new owners of what is now to be called Longwood can exclude the public from the enclave, it is offensive on several fronts. You'll remember that Governor Wallace of Alabama is famous for his assertion in 1963, segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. And though Wallace came to regret his antisocial posturing, segregation does persist in the 21st century only under a new name, that of private property rights. And instead of excluding just one group of citizens or another, today's segregation affects everyone because it is not possible to sort and segregate the group without setting everyone else aside. The desire to be exclusive is apparently widely shared. But I would contend that since humans are a social species, it is not in our community's interest to sanction such behavior. That said, given that during the 10 years this development has been authorized, just 11 lots out of over 4,000 initially planned have been sold and two houses built. It could be argued that the project was premature 10 years ago. It could similarly be argued that given that our delta soils are not suited for on-site sewage treatment and the utility is not prepared to transport and treat what a development of 1,320 residential units would contribute, the Longwood project is still premature. On the other hand, it might well be behind the times. The national trend is for people to abandon rural subdivisions and move into urban communities with centralized utility and transportation facilities. Half of this country's population now lives in 144 counties. The other half of the population is spread over 2,998. You may argue that the speculator's risk is not your concern. Somebody has obviously not concerned about sending inadequate sewer and water lines 
four miles out Box Swamp Road and 2.5 miles along the Golden Isle Parkway beyond Highway 99. However, those are sunk costs, and as any good businessman knows, not an excuse for wasting more. But just as it is not nice to fool Mother Nature, we should not promote or facilitate foolish real estate speculators. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to the abandonment? Seeing none, commissioners. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, abandonment as second. Uh, listed. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I have one question for um, county attorney. Um, if if communities are gated, um, does that allow them to discriminate against anyone for any reason? Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, I, I'd just like to make a comment right here. Sure. Um, as I did when Mr. Bishop stepped up a while ago, uh, this, these items we're talking about right here are definitely going to tie into items 44 and 45 in general business. And uh, I'm here to tell you uh, I can't agree more with uh, Mr. Smith, Ms. Smith, uh, Mr. Holland. Uh, I was on that Joint Water Sewer Commission back when the original folks that had this property and I was there when they were trying to do what they were trying to do and that was exactly the question that was asked to you Mr. Andrews about had there been an attempt or had there been infrastructure sewage infrastructure put in place out there I know there was an attempt um, and at one time and, and I know the attempt was being made so they could liquidate the property and now correct me if I'm wrong is there a um, is there a sewer line out there to a certain certain length and is there a lift station in place um, the, there is sewer the houses that are out there are connected to it um, there is not a lift station this system was designed with uh, low pressure systems. Um, the original concept was individual um, uh, pumps at the houses and a large diameter force main going all the way back to the sewer treatment plant. That was installed, there's water and sewer. And that, at, that was at the expense of the property owner as far as them getting their sewer to our force main. To, to they, the line we've got out there. They installed the force main. Our joint sewer's got out there now. So, but that's yes, sir. And and they installed the force main also, also uh, oh. down down Buck Swamp and over Highway 17 and down um, Southport Parkway. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, if if you will, let me let, let let me help answer this question for you about what's out there. Um, and. I know his memory probably slips in because apparently he had to be on the board that approved what's out there if you was on the board when this thing was approved. But I didn't the, vote for it. Yeah, yeah. What they have out there is a gravity flow line. Okay. The only the uh, the 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 water and sewer sewer as you conventionally think of where it's your solids and your gray water going into a sewer line. They don't have that, okay? Um, what they have is uh, something almost akin to a septic tank in each yard, okay? When they flush, it goes to a septic tank. They just don't have a drain field. Within that septic tank, they have, if you will, it's a little more elaborate, but a grinder pump, okay? All you get, in, get coming out... I, away from the homes is your gray water. There's no solids, it's just gray water. And that gray water trickles into the pipe and it gravity flows to the to the plant. Uh, to put a full bore, if you will, 
waste system out there, you'd have to have a pump station to pump it all, all those miles back to the plant. They don't have a pump station. That was never in, that was not envisioned at the time that all this was approved. It was approved by the Glen County. This was not approved by Joint Water Sewer because Joint Water Sewer was not in existence. Glen County approved the step systems. Um, in my opinion, and I'm on the Joint Water Sewer at, right now. In my opinion, that was a huge mistake that the Board of Commissioners did back in those days. Okay, because it it it, it allowed to go forward with a with, with a waste system that is not a true waste system to get it away from the homes. And so, um, you know, we're here today with some people that want that own the property, want to develop that property, and they're doing, you know, they don't have a whole lot of options. And um, so what you have out there, you have a line that will take gravity flow, it will take gray water, but if you start putting a regular waste in it, it's not going any place. It is just not going to go any place. And you only had two homes. You have two homes that are hooked up to it. There was a, uh, back in the day, if you will, there was a community center that's hooked up to it. But it's now abandoned. It's falling apart. So um, all you have are two homes that are trickling into the line out by the road. And um, so... That's a long answer, Commissioner. Commissioner Browning, I'm very much aware of every word you just said because I've been right dead in the middle of it in Bell Point. And I'm here to tell you folks, we have a lift station sitting right in the middle of Bell Point. And Bell Point East and all of Old South Bell Point and half of the center of Bell Point are on septic tanks. And they've been on septic tanks forever and a day. Okay? And don't tell me that we're going to go out there and this big a piece of property and we're going to start laying in septic tanks as close as to the wetlands as this is and hopefully in the future for the environmental standpoint that we will get joint water sewer out there and we will get the low force main with the grinder pumps. I've been through the whole thing with trying to get Bell Point East on that same system. It's about ten to twelve thousand dollars per household, and it is. It's just like he says. It's like a holding tank. You stick it in there, goes through a grinder, and it hits the low low force main at the right of way. You don't have to put trunk lines down the middle of the roads, and it forces it right into a regular sewer system. Uh, uh, just just like it was. Just flowing water, so like you said, just gray water. So, but it's but it's expensive, and what the problem is is getting everybody to uh, join join the club, and and that's that's the big deal. Um, I've been through this uh, seven eight years ago out in out in Bell Point, and I'm telling you, it's not an easy task. And when I was on joint water sewer, and after I learned how many septic tanks and what the problems were we had in our infrastructure in this county. I had vowed right then that, to me, if we had one more septic tank put in this ground, it was one too many. So I'm, I'm very uh, opposed to <coughs> what we're doing here, which is obviously going to lead up to what we're eventually going to get to in item 44 and 45. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, call the question. All those in favor of AB 3328 uh, for the abandonment of the uh, roads and drainage easements and the Peninsula of Golden Isle signify by raising your right hand. That is six. All those opposed, one. Six to one. All right, passes. Okay, number four, AB 3335, consider the application for abandonment of the unopened alley right-of-way in block 16 of the East Beach subdivision behind 924 Bruce Drive, William Churchwell. Applicant, Mr. Andrews. Commissioners, this is a um, single lot, uh, other end of a spectrum from what you just looked at. This is the request to abandon a portion of unopened alleyway on East Beach behind uh, one lot front that fronts on Bruce Drive. Um, 
this is this is the unopened alleyway. Uh, the houses to the north, the two houses had a half of the alleyway abandoned. Uh, excuse me, three years ago. This is a look looking north. Uh, county maintained ditch fences on the uh, current property line. The center line of the alleyway is these are bamboo. It's over in the middle of the bamboo stand. This is the the abandonment plat. The request is just for one half of the uh, rear alleyway. Information this is the East Beach. Um, these rights of way are by dedication only. The ownership of the uh, land itself is not with the county. Currently, there is a drainage ditch, as you saw. There's also um, power and uh, water and sewer laterals in that area of the, in that portion of the unopened right of way. Um, this this has been used for these uses for as long as, as the development's been there, house development, that is. Um, that would be the continued use. We could also, if the abandonment didn't occur, we could open up a portion of this alleyway for public access um, to the rear of the properties there. Um, public, we continue to use it for um, the uses of utilities and drainage and for any other uses that uh, the public would have benefit from and, and abandonment would, would convey it to the tax rolls. The comments under the review was that there were utilities in there including drainage, water, sewer, and power. Um, the uh, motion addresses those in that we would be retaining, recommending retaining, drainage, uh, retaining easements for all those current uses. Uh, today, I believe y'all were copied on emails from adjacent property uh, property owner. They actually their their property is here, fronting on Ninth Street. They the side of their property is is a portion of the alleyway that is requested to be abandoned. Um, they had uh, concerns regarding um, making sure that y'all were aware that they, that they had concerns about making sure the drainage was kept in that area and that there were utilities in that area that all needed to remain. Um, the recommended motion is to Retain a drainage easement over the whole of the area requested to be abandoned. And Georgia Power and Joint Water and Sewer have asked that they get individual easements for their utilities out there. So before we conveyed deeds, assuming that the that this item passes before the we convey deeds, we would verify that those easements had been executed with the utilities. Uh, the motion that I put together was to um, approve the abandonment but retain drainage and utility easements that would um, provide the not only those individual easements that would be going to Georgia Power and um, Water and Sewer, but if there were other utilities that needed to service those lots, the county would be able to um, help accommodate those, any other utilities that might want to come in there. Questions for staff? So, so just to uh, clarify, because the, uh, the, the Merwins did have a follow-up letter to you uh, around uh, uh, I don't know. Yes, sir. Five o'clock or so. But we will retain the drainage easement. Th that's that's the that's my recommendation. That's your recommendation. So, that we so, so what what benefit redounds to the property owner that's requesting this abandonment? Maybe you put the picture up of a of of an area where it's got a chain link fence on the left side, a big ditch down the middle. And then a bamboo stand on the other side. What what benefit do they derive from that? Um, the, the, I, I guess outside of any any personal benefits they may feel from having more control or or having the public not in general not be able to be there. There's also the um, building setback. Currently, it's measured from the property line, uh, seven feet. 
if the abandonment is approved, that property line would move to from the fence over to this side. That would put their building setback in in the area where we would have where the county would retain a drainage easement. So they would be. Um, uh, benefit from about seven feet of additional building envelope on their property along the we get to the right one, along the rear property line right but that would move their development their the, the developable area of the part of the property from seven feet off their current rear yard I mean rear property line to what's now their rear property line because with the retention of the drainage easement there'd be no ability to put permanent permanent structures in that area right so so it wouldn't cause harm to the county necessarily because they wouldn't be allowed to do anything within the area of easement correct that's correct right. ordinance practice yeah. and policy says that we don't so I, I don't mean to prolong the discussion but it seems pretty straightforward to me <clears throat> Any other Just questions? One of staff? many of these we've done. Um, I think we've, um, we've done a dozen or more on East Beach, and exactly where your last line you said right there was was pretty much the explanation for it all. You're just moving the setback line, if you will, forward about seven feet or so, and, and I mean they they're gonna cut the grass and all that. You just it's behind. Nobody ever gets to it except the property owner. Um, so anyway, this just for comment. We've we've approved a bunch of these over there on East Beach. Any other questions for staff? This is a public hearing item. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the abandonment may come forward and do so. State your name and uh, address for the record, please. Uh, my name is William Churchwell, the owner of the property. So maybe I can answer some of the questions that were asked. Uh, and for the commissioners, uh, again, uh, the main reason we wanted to get the property, we'd like to just leave it the way it is. It's the back of our property line. It's got a ditch in it. It's probably from here to the wall and about this wide. And I'd just like to keep it that way. That's going to be our home for me and my wife. Uh, and we plan to live there a long time. So that's the main reason we just wanted to keep it. Our next door neighbors got theirs done about two years ago. And we probably should have went in with them when they got theirs done, but we didn't have the funding for it back then. We now had the funding for it because I think we had to pay some money yeah, to these guys to get it done. So we, like I said, that's the main reason we just want to get it done. And you we realize like you win the door prize of a new tax bill. Oh, well, again, I know that's coming, and hopefully it won't be that bad. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any, anyone else wish to speak in favor of the application? Good evening. I'm Gerald Merwin. My wife and I own the property on Ninth Street that was discussed earlier, and we appreciate Commissioner Murphy's support on that and, and reiterating it. I think there was some confusion with an early email exchange this afternoon about the drainage issue, and it appeared to us that that was not going to go the direction that we wanted. And what I want to emphasize is that ditch that's in that picture is the best drainage solution that there is on East Beach. My wife's grandparents built the house that we live in in 1950. She's been seeing that area as the, the natural events of that time period have occurred. And we have some serious drainage problems over there. Our side yard does not drain. And they piped the ditch in front of our side yard some years ago as part of a project. And we specifically asked that they leave that ditch intact because it worked. And they did. So we do not want the ditch closed we do not want the ditch piped we do not want the ditch covered in any way because it works so we are totally in favor of the abandonment we have no problem at all with that but we do appreciate the commission's support in leaving that drainage as it is because that's an important component of what makes the neighborhood a pleasant place to be um, I don't think I have any other comments other than that, but we appreciate you letting us talk tonight. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Anyone else wish to speak in favor of the abandonment? 
Anyone wish to speak in opposition to the abandonment? Saying none, hearing none. Commissioners? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve 3335, the abandonment of the unopened alleyway in Block 16 of East Beach Subdivision behind 1924 Bruce Drive. I have a motion and a second. <coughs> Discussion. Real quick, Mr. Andrews, we are leaving. They are leaving that as an open ditch, correct? The, the county, the county has no um, project that I'm aware of to, to pipe that ditch at this time. Okay. And <laughs> it looks like to me they've been maintaining it. Are you sure you're not going for your law degree? <laughs> Just said no. <laughs> it, it, it looks like we've been maintaining it with a weed eater. Yeah. Um, any other uh, any other discussion? All right. Yeah, Mr. Hours. Um, somebody did. Sorry, Commissioner, Commissioner oh, Coleman. Coleman. I'm sorry. Sitting right next to you. <laughs> that includes the drainage agents. All right. All right. I'll call the question. Uh, all those in favor of. Uh, Approval of the abandonment signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. All right. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve all items on consent agenda general business and all items on consent agenda finance committee with the exception of any items any commissioner so wishes to pull. Uh, yes, if I might, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to pull item 17 for discussion, please. 17. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to also pull item um, 7. 7 and 17. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I make a motion. Oh, you already did, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. Second. You second the motion? Right. All right. There's a motion and a second to approve all those uh, items on consent agenda with the exception of item number 7 and item number 14. 17. 17. 17. I mean 17. Uh, 7 and 17. Um, do we have a motion and a second? Yes. Okay. All right, any discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Okay, that is unanimous. Item number seven. Mr. Chairman, I... Um, well, let, let, me, let me read it, Commissioner Booker, if I could, and so we know where we are here, so I know where I am. Okay, item number seven. Appoint Jones, Hooks, Bill Austin, and Jack Kilgore to the Board of Governors of the Brunswick and Glen County Development Authority for a three-year term beginning August 1st, 2017, to fill the vacancies created by the expiration of the terms of Cedric King, Bruce Dixon, and Jack Kilgore. Uh, Commissioner Booker. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a, a problem with, uh, with the, at least one of the um, uh, potential appointees. And so, I, I mean, I also have an issue with the fact that we just, we have to, we have no real say-so other than, I guess, this is our point in that process, to choose the ones who would best help with our districts. And um, I know for a fact one of these would not um, be helpful to my district. All right. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, I have a question. Uh, Mr. Kilgore, is he currently on the EDA board? Yes. yes so he's being reappointed? Yes. And and how long is that term? Four years? Three. three years? No, three years of not getting anything done. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second. Any others? Any further discussion? All those in favor of approval of the three that are listed uh, for the EDA, signify by raising your right hand. We have. Were you right? You, yep, I'm right. Commissioner Murphy, sir. He's of those three that were. Yes, sir. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five. All right, all those opposed? Two. All right. Uh, five to two.
those appointments will go forward. All right, item number 17, approve the contract award for rebuilding of the St. Simons Island Marina docks destroyed by Hurricane Matthew to in Intron Technology Inc. of Jacksonville, Florida, the lowest responsive and responsible bidder in the amount of 125496 Funding is provided by the Revenue Stabilization Fund, Rainy Day Fund, and in the committed fund balance with reimbursement from FEMA upon completion of the project. This is approved pre FEMA approved FEMA project PWPA 04GA4284 dash PW00354. All right, Mr. Lutz. Um, who who's going to pull that? Peter? I'm sorry, Commissioner Murphy. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Peter. Uh, so uh, I, I, I would think we would be appropriate to have Mr. Deloach uh, lead into this uh, discussion, please, with the information you have. Thank you. We were asked to go out and to, to look at the marina for damages uh, a couple of months back. Uh, we're given an initial value of monies that the folks that on the board had to, that we're requesting to spend. My examination came up with uh, substantial, about four times the amount that they were looking to put into the project. Uh, we brought that to the committee um, with the understanding that what they initially were asking for was just a simple get by fix. The lack of maintenance through the years suggested that a lot of the damages from the hurricanes was from these get by repairs. Just do what we need to do for today to get it back functional. Well, functionality does not always serve well in such a catastrophic event as far as the perpetual use and and s solid structures that are needed in, in this type of facility. So we went out to bid and we put the initial scope of work that was requested as a base bid. We put two alternates in that was scope of work that, that my examination had shown that was needed to, to really do a repair that the county would feel good about going in and making the effort to have something that when we left we say we repaired it as it should have been. Okay, we opened bids Tuesday and uh, I was slightly higher on my bid versus the bid that we actually got. I'm very pleased to say that Intron Technologies was the low bid. They have worked with us before and are a very competent and professional company when it comes to this marine type work. They done our last project on St. Simons Island Marina, uh, Fishing Pier, I'm sorry, and have performed uh, repairs on Oak Grove Island Bridge. They are also in here tonight for recommend recommendation by this committee for approval for the Dunbar Creek Bridge on the Sea Island Causeway. Uh, with their knowledge and expertise of uh, floats and marina type installations and marine environments, I feel very good in telling you that we have one of the better companies that, that we could have gotten on this bid. And when we get through, we will have something that everyone will be pleased to know that, that the county got involved and we were out there and we repaired this thing. And I, and I thank you very much for your, your hard work and that of uh, Mr. Dave Austin, who can't be with us tonight. But to, to roll it back to remind everybody, St. Simon's Boating and Marina is a, uh, is a county-owned facility in Gascoigne Bluff Park, and it has been operating with a lease uh, uh, since I think it was last signed in 2004 with a five-year automatic renewal. The hurricane came up about nine months ago and caused considerable damage, and we weren't sure if FEMA would uh, participate in, um, 
in uh, repairs uh, on this structure, uh, nor uh, did the uh, club itself have insurance to cover the damage. And, and earlier on, uh, we, we approved, I think it was uh, $19,000, Mr. Hours, to participate in the repairs. Uh, and this has been slowly sort of percolating along with Mr. Deloach's help. We, as he, as he uh, stated, uh, we didn't want to put a, uh, you know, a little lipstick uh, on, this, on this situation, which used to be uh, beautiful, but after the hurricane truly was a pig. We really wanted to fix this up so it was safe desirable and, and, and functional. Uh, in the interim, uh, FEMA did come back and approve reimbursement, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Hours, but I think the number was $211,000. Uh, but there needs to be a, a contribution on the, on the part of the county, uh, which I believe is on the order of about twenty-six dollars or $27,000. I'm just recalling this off the top of my head. My, my understanding is that the boat club is going to try to offset that with donations from their members, which I think is a very uh, honorable and admirable uh, effort on their part. Thus far, I'm not sure those funds have been raised, but that is, in fact, uh, the discussion. So, so that's where we are. But, but the other half of this is uh, we still don't have a, a, a signed or amended lease. Uh, for the club, and I think that's going to be incumbent upon the chairman, myself, and our attorney uh, to go through multiple items that were, were uh, discussed in great detail several months ago about what, what I felt were inadequacies in the lease, inadequacies to the extent that we assured uh, that the public uh, was, in fact, a, a, a full member participant in this quote-unquote club, uh, and it was a public facility, and it was being operated in a, a fiscally responsible fashion. Um, I think I've, I've touched on the high points, but uh, you know the, the, that's what we need to assure. And the reason I pulled it, Mr. Chairman, was not to do anything other than just bring these issues to light because they're very important issues uh, about the volume of dollars with FEMA. As Mr. Deloach said, uh, 125,000 is going to get the work done by Intron, but there's more work to be done. And hopefully with, uh, what, do, what do we call those orders uh, that, are, that come in later? Uh, change orders. Change orders are going to come in to complete more of the work and more of the damage and really get this up to first class uh, functionality. Uh, but uh, I think we are sort of hanging on to see uh, how uh, the, the current membership does, in fact, participate in the requested donation. And, uh, and really, I guess we're still at a loss as to how much the county is going to contribute, unless we're still uh, you know, obligated to contribute that $19,000. What do you think, Mr. Chairman? Uh, my understanding is that the, the voting club is going to um, cover the whole amount. I mean, that was the last word I got from them. Uh, but... Uh, uh, I don't have anything in writing to, right. that, to that effect, but they they wanted to do it themselves. I mean, they didn't particularly want to encumber the county, uh, and they were willing to raise the money, and I think they have the wherewithal to do it. I don't think there's any question about that. But we're, Mr. Adams, we're ready to move ahead, correct? I, I would point out, Commissioner, that the scope of work as bid was for the northern half of this facility only and it's my assumption that the and having looked at the FEMA evaluation that it took the marina as a whole and that our scope of services change order to fit that work will entail both the north and the south sides. That, that's also my understanding and uh, with, with, with the caveat that uh, there have been some arrangements made uh, by some of the officers uh, of the facility to get uh, some of the south end work done uh, outside the scope of this contract. So when, once we put it all together, we may have a finished product with this, uh, this windfall of cash. There, there has been work that has progressed since our last meetings with staff over there and with the board. Uh, some of the floats have been brought back in line such that the southern half is now a, an intact walk from one end to the other without miss, missing pier. Uh, you have my assurance that with the contractor that we have, 
that we will be able to go out and reevaluate what has been done in the, in the current situation of all of the sides and work within the parameters of the, of the funding to, to give a, a better product than we would have only going in to, sm to do a small fix. With the whole scope in vision, we can do a much better job of fixing this and making it something that we're proud to walk away from rather than just a small piece of, of repair that we wish we could have got that, but we didn't have funds. Um, I have one concern, um, not so much with uh, with what we're, you're requesting today, uh, but um, the other issues um, that this really is a, a public um, facility, um, but it had not been marketed that way. And if when the lease agreement comes up, I would hope that um, we would see a real um, outreach um, plan that's meaningful. Um, I, I couldn't support anything else because um, the, the one or two cents that comes from my district um, that have supported this over all this time, and I'm pretty sure most of the folk in my district didn't know that this was a public facility. I can tell you, sir, there's been discussions of signage that have... Well, you can move more than signage well, after I, this, I, this many years of, sure. of being marketed as right. a uh, private club. Right, and, it, it, and this has been discussed. One of the first and easy steps is to adequately sign it as a public facility so that the people coming and going back and forth know, for one, that it's located down Hamilton Road, and two, once they get there, that it is for use by the public as well as the, as the uh, pr private parties. Yeah, Mr. Uh -huh. Delos, you're aware of that. Um, when this uh, lease gets read down, I assume it's going to come before the commission, Mr. County Attorney, because I have some of the same issues, and, and I know that uh, uh, other commissioners have said the same thing. I've only lived here a mere 30 years of my adult life, and I had no clue whatsoever that Glen County owned this facility. I always thought it was a private yacht club, and I'm going to insist when this is done that, you know, we, we have other issues with, I believe there's a boat dock, or there's a free boat dock, and it's the only one that Glen County has on the island, and apparently we have the capability for people to come in and launch a boat out, without, whether they're charged a fee or not, that's fine, like a private marina since it's under a private contract. But I really think that we should get to the point where people can take a boat in there and launch that boat and pay their 5 or $8 or whatever it is to launch it and actually use this without being a yacht club member. So, you know, and that's, that has nothing to do with you, uh, Mr. Right. Deloach. It's just something that, you know, I brought Right, up right. I can discussion. assure you that the chairman and myself will, will have those uh, continued discussions as we've had those same discussions in the past. And uh, you have my assurance that we, we will get that done. I'd, I'd just like to make a statement. I'm, I'm a former member of the of the uh, yacht club there, or however you want to refer to it. I've never known it to be anything but public. Uh, the the reason being, um, I matter, matter of fact, I most most recently uh, had to have my boat uh, towed to that to that marina uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and. Uh, I was I was going to ask you about that gap in the dock there <laughs> that, that was missing that you were talking about y'all put Southern it back half. yeah and I, I had no idea there was this much damage to that over there so anyway uh, I've I've had the opportunity to um, to be a member of this uh, outfit and I didn't really consider it a club if you will I mean it was. They charge you X number of dollars per foot of your boat to lift it out and sit it on the trailer for you, and they put it back in, or excuse me, vice versa. But uh, when you compare to other rates, other marinas around, the, the purpose of the paid membership is to um, help subsidize the extremely low rates that they charge for your boat lift. And, you know, we, we charge a flat rate at Blythe Island, and, um, but if you're a member of the club, which the club money goes to support the marina, um, is, is, we lease the marina to them and it's their business, if you will, and that's the way they create their, uh, revenues. But it, it, 
I've lived here all my life, and I've never known that to be anything but public. I mean, I pulled up to that thing many times long before I was ever a member of it. I just haven't been a member in the last couple of years because my boat hasn't been in the water. But other than that, I've, I've had a very good experience with the Marine on St. Simon. Yeah, I would, uh, since, since this meeting's moving along pretty quick oh, tonight, yeah. we're going to get out of here kind of early. I thought I'd just add my two cents worth. I'm with <laughs> Commissioner Coleman. I'm with Commissioner Coleman. I guess we're the only two that know that's a public facility over there. I've been knowing it for uh, actually going back to about the middle of the last century when my uncle operated it, and it was a it was a public facility then, and I was about that tall and a lot younger than I am now. But um, yeah, it's always been a public facility. Um, I think the rates have always been, you know. Um, you know, good market rates. Um, now, as far as advertising and letting people know that it's a public facility, I don't know if, 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 if I, I don't know why that hadn't got out there. But uh, I'm, I'm all for letting, letting the public know what we have over there, and especially once we get it all fixed up, make it a better place. But um, it's, it's, a, it's always been a public facility, as I, as I can remember. Mr. Right. Chairman, I'd like to just finally make a motion to approve the contract for the rebuilding of the St. Simons <laughs> Marina docks. I have a motion. I, 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 I second it. We have a motion and a second. We, do we need any more discussion? <laughs> Anybody? Got and we got the picture. Call the vote. <laughs> All those in favor of uh, approving the contract uh, signify by raising your right hand. That's great. And uh, I can assure you that... Uh, Commissioner Murphy and I will work on the visibility of our public uh, facility over there and making the public known. Thank you, Commissioner. Making it known to the public. All right, uh, general business. Um, <coughs> WSV, 30, <coughs> WSV 3492, the Peninsula Golden House Phase 1, approved the request to utilize individual sewer facilities as outlined in Section 606-.1 of the Glen County Subdivision Regulations for the subdivision located off Buckswamp Road, the project consists of 208 separate parcels. The closest water and sewer connections are located <coughs> near the site. However, the Joint Water Sewer Commission, JWSC, cannot provide the sewer to this site due to the capacity issues. Mr. Andrews. Commissioners, uh, this is the same parcel that the abandonment that you heard previously is on. Um, this item requests that, uh, like the um, agenda item indicated to, that the board vary the requirement in the ordinance, in the sub county subdivision ordinance, that requires that uh, development tie on to municipal water and sewer systems. Um, water, the, this request is for the sewer only. The water is, is going to remain. Um, tie, the individual lots will remain tied on to the um, joint water and sewers water system. The sewer system is there, but uh, we have a letter from joint water and sewer indicating they currently don't have capacity in that system to accommodate new taps in this subdivision. Um, the, this is the section of the ordinance uh, condensed a little bit, but uh, the, that's requested to be varied. Um, and the justification for that request is the letter from Joint Water and Sewer due to downstream capacity issues. And uh, requested motion, or a recommended motion. This is not so. a public hearing item. Any questions for the staff? No, I don't have any questions. So you guys start debating about this again after you just did, went through all this on item three, I'm going to stab you with my pen. I make well, a motion been, to been approve. Forewarned. I make a motion to approve the request to utilize individual sewer, sewer facilities. Have a motion. Second. second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a comment here once again, <laughs> folks. You gonna you gonna bury Glen County in septic tanks? Uh, I, I, I'll use my subdivision one more time. If this thing is not at your front door, you're not concerned about it. Neighbors, a bad septic tank. You hadn't had a bad day yet. 
So I'm, I'm here to tell you, you can approve all this all you want to, but for our future generations, this is not going to be a good thing. And where this property is located out there, it's low, it's wet, it's very close to the Little Satilla River, and these people are going to dig. You're getting them ready to give them permission to put, what, 1,300 holes in the ground and put a septic tank in it. Um, they've waited this long. I just don't see why in the world we couldn't postpone this movement until Joint Water Sewer is able to get that sewer system in out there. And and with the, the last word in on this thing is if you guys insist on doing this, I would certainly like to put some wording in whatever we do here, wherever it needs to be put, that just as soon as the sewer system is put in, these people will be required to hook to it. Now, they can go out there and throw these ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 septic tanks in the ground, but you just, you just can't keep pouring septic into the ground in Glen County, uh, especially close to these rivers and, and marshlands. And, and we have just got a, we got a bad problem now, and it's getting worse by the day. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I, I understand Commissioner Coleman's concerns, but let's don't fool ourselves here in Glen County. We are going to be allowing septic tanks for a long time to come in this county or either we're going to shut down development. We can make a decision or, you know, whatever we want to do. But your order sewer is not in a position now for that location and a number of other locations in Glen County, and they're not going to be in a position for quite some years to come to have the kind of money it will take to put in sewer lines and force pump stations in outlying areas of Glen County to get to, uh, to, to, to uh, transport that waste back to these treatment facilities we have. Um, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Talking about waiting until we're ready, um, you're talking about shutting down development that, in my view, we need in Glen County. Um, I'll step right out there and say it. I'm, I'm for development in Glen County. And we have the most modern technology that there is for septic systems that will be used in this development and any other development that goes in in Glen County. We no longer use the concrete box in a simple drain field. Um, I guess it's the best technology there is out there. Uh, state of Georgia forces us to use what we uh, mandate for builders, you know, these times. But the question goes back to if you think we can wait, well, I differ with you. Uh, we have very few choices, uh, and, and, and I'm, not talking, I'm not talking about just this development. There's going to be other developments to come as this economy cranks back up and it gets here to Glen County and we're going to be faced with the same decision and I will tell you we hear a lot about septic tanks we hear about the um, uh, low lands and all that all of Glen County is low Mr. James Holland that was here earlier talked about being at elevation about 19 at his lot and couldn't get 19 feet of elevation is a pretty high piece of ground in Glen County it's a pretty high piece of ground and, and 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 I'm going to tell you, he you know talking about he had to turn uh, 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 put in a um, drainage ditch to run the water off. He wasn't he wasn't getting percolation because of the water in the ground. He he was he was not getting percolation because of the um, uh, clay that's in the ground. That was his percolation problem. We have that all over Glen County, and. Um, so we're either going to give up on development, we're going to give up on it because the word septic tank or the word low or the word marsh, or so. we don't allow people to build it. We hear a swamp. We don't allow people to build in swamps as it is. People don't build in marsh as it is. And, you know, I think we've got some pretty good standards here in Glen County and the DNR looking over our shoulders every day. And so we're not going to go to those areas. But if somebody has a lot 
we can put septic tanks in, you know, if they're done right, and we can we can get by with that. And we have not had, we keep talking about, as we talk about these things, we talk about what's going to happen. We have not had a major septic tank problem. We have had some isolated problems in Glenn County with septic tanks, and I will tell you that we have. But we've also had more problems with, with, with sewage spills from the man-made waste treatment facilities and the pipes that go to them than we ever had with septic tanks. We're under consent order in Glenn County with sewage spills, not because of septic tanks, because of our wastewater treatment facilities we have and some spillages that we've had. So, you know, you want to shut those down? I don't think we're going to shut them down. But we're going to manage them as best we can. And I think that's what we have to do as a responsible commission, manage the growth as best we can and move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any further discussion? All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, don't hear any further discussion. All those in favor of uh, approving the uh, individual septic facilities signify by raising your right hand. That's six to one. All those opposed? Thank you, sir. I should have kept the pizza place till last. Um, <laughs> WSB 3551, Longwood Development in the Peninsula Golden Isles PD Tax, excluding the existing lots in phase one of the subdivision, approved the request to utilize individual sewer facilities as outlined in section 606.1 of the Glen County Subdivision regulations for 1300 lot area of Buckswamp Road approximately 3.5 miles from US Highway 17. The project consists of 2900 acres with 11 separate parcels. The closest water and sewer connections are located near the site. However, the Joint Water Sewer Commission cannot provide sewer to this site due to the capacity due to capacity issues. Parcel ID 03-1877302680. Eight zero 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 six two six eight zero one zero three one eighty five eighty six zero two zero two five three zero three two six eight eight nine zero two zero two nine seven three zero two zero two nine seven four zero three two six eight nine zero help. Commissioners, this request is the parcel numbers that were. Red comprises the area in red on the map. Uh, this is the item you just voted on, phase one. Uh, this is the balance of the area that was in the original plan development text for the uh, peninsula at Golden Isles, currently renamed to and being addressed here as Longwood. Uh, same request, uh, same reasoning. The Joint Water and Sewer issued a different letter. Uh, there's for the Longwood development. This was uh, June instead of earlier this year. Questions for staff, Mr. Andrews? Do we have septic tanks on St. Simons? Yes, sir, we do. In 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 new development. I I don't believe we have any new development that that currently has septic in it. No, sir. Uh, well, the, you know, the, the same excuse for this as it was for 44 here, uh, that they don't have the capacity to uh, handle uh, that. I mean, we, we all know we've already discussed about the very low participation in buying these lots, and there's only a handful of houses out there now. Uh, we're sitting here approving 1,300 of these things. And, um, uh, you know, if, if that happens to prompt the sales of this property, then... You know, so be it. But the, the the bottom line is this: if if we had a very similar situation in on St. Simons, would would we would in, in which we've we've had and you've had joint water sewer many times say that the the pump stations need to be repaired. We don't have the we don't have the capacity to take care of what we got, but yet. Um, <clears throat> You know, you, you get into this right here. 
uh, not having the capacity is old hat to me. Um, you know, quite frankly, I think there's another way to do this. I don't know um, if Joint Water Sewer uh, doesn't have the, the funding to uh, accommodate Glen County, then they need to, in my opinion, they need to get out and find the funding and uh, worry about paying it back later. But what we're doing to our environment here with these septic tanks is, is going to be irreparable. Uh, you can you can pay back loans. You can you can do what's necessary to put in the correct infrastructure to accommodate Glen County and water and sewer. But but just just to do this to accommodate another development with this many, um, it doesn't have to be this many. I mean, with any at all. Uh, if you got one, you're gonna have two, and so on. So I, I just don't see the support. Where, where you guys are coming from when you're supporting this stuff because you're not doing anything you're shooting, shooting the county in the foot for uh, future generations. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner. A any other um, questions for staff? Mr. Andrews, if somebody on St. Simons wanted to do this and they increase the size of their lots and thus reduce their density sufficiently to meet the state and county requirements for a septic tank and the Joy Water and Sewer told us that they couldn't get... Uh, them join the sewer or hookups for an unknown period of time. Is there anything wrong with them coming in and petitioning to do the same thing that's being done here? The, the, we, we would bring the same item to right. the board to make the decision. Right. So yes. the fact that we're, we're not approving any like this is because nobody's asked for it. That's correct. Thank you. Yes. All right. Any other discussion? All right. This is not a public hearing item. Uh, Motion to approve the Longwood development. Motion by Vanessa. Commissioner Strickland. Second. Second by Commissioner um, Booker. All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of WSV 3551 signify by raising your right hand. All right, all those opposed? Six to one. Thank you. 46, uh, consider authorizing the submittal of the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia, ACCG, equipment leasing program application to the lease purchase of two pumpers and a 95-foot platform aerial truck in the amount of $2,336,639, Mr. Hours. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, uh, the item before you now uh, tonight is to request uh, approval of, of uh, submitting an application to ACCG uh, for the purchase of these apparatus, as uh, was mentioned. This year's budget calls for the lease purchase, so this, this item was planned in, in this year's budget. The uh, term of the lease would be 10 years. Uh, the expected interest rate um, would be 3% or less. Uh, preliminary indications are that it would actually be less than 3%. So if the board approves um, us applying for uh, the lease purchase program, we would uh, bring back the uh, two items to you uh, in August. One would be the actual lease agreement with ACCG, and the second item would be the purchase of um, the apparatus through the uh, Florida Sheriff's Association. i would be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Questions for staff? Mr. Chairman, motion to approve. Second. <coughs> have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of authorizing submittal of the application? All right, that is unanimous. Thank you. 47, <coughs> consider the request to piggyback on the State of Florida contract for bulk fuel delivery services with First Coast Biofuels for uh, 3.9 cents a gallon markup on unleaded and diesel fuels freight for unleaded uh, deliveries made by transport truck at 4.4 uh, cents per gallon diesel and 4.1 cents per gallon unleaded and tank wagon freight will be between uh, 0.71 cents and 0.96 cents. Uh, Commissioner Stanbar, you want to take this one? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I pulled this gentleman uh, simply for the fact that I, do, I did not want to lock the county into a year-long contract. These rates are actually slightly higher than what we were paying locally for this uh, service, and I was concerned about that and would like to see it rebid. However, I have, in the meantime, been informed by Assistant uh, Attorney, County Attorney Mr. Uh, Will that we have a 15-day uh, termination clause 
was accepted by the vendor and will be included in that. So with that said, I would like to make a motion to approve this with the language of the 15-day termination as specified by the Assistant County Attorney. Thank you. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? And, and Commissioner, be an RFP put out in September to, uh, to address this uh, fuel thing. Any, any other discussion? All those in favor of this uh, temporary uh, piggyback uh, signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, 48, consider an amendment to section 2-4-17 of the Glenn County Code of Ordinances to amend the appointing process and members of the Dangerous Dog Hearing uh, Board. Uh, Aaron. Commissioners, this is the this is the ordinance amendment that uh, was brought up in in um, your last month's meeting, and y'all wanted to be brought back to y'all to rewrite the appointment process. So we've done that. Uh, so rather than having the county manager make the appointments, the appointments will be made by board commissioners. Um, so it's set up as a three member board with three alternates. Uh, they would serve four year terms. Uh, that would be staggered initially. Uh, we have put in there some qualifications uh, for those uh, board members or those, uh, yeah, for the board members um, to uh, to qualify. Um, and that's uh, that's it. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer them. All right. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the changes recommended by the county attorney. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Thank you, Commissioners. And with that having been said, do we have anything for executive session? All right, motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. County Attorney, for showing mercy upon us. Boy, he wanted to. No, 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 no. Moving on. I had a, I had a bad Mike, moving on. Mike, turn the.